Okay, this is our generator heater video. Um, generators are an open type feed water heater. They remove non-condensable gases, um, primarily oxygen and carbon dioxide, and they reclaim heat from exhaust steam. Um, one plant I worked at, all the steam turbines exhaust to a five pound header, and the exhaust steam was used to heat feed water. There's no feed water heaters. So the heat was reclaimed from your turbines to heat the feed water to the boiler. Um, the way they work, water heated to a saturation temperature won't hold any dissolved gases. So you heat the water to a saturation temperature and the low partial pressure removes oxygen and carbon dioxide. Um, this style of deaerator, you have your steam coming in, IP turbine exhaust, you have your flash tank vent dropping in, you have your condensate coming in the top, your steam comes in, it counterflows. Down here you have no oxygen, very little oxygen in the steam coming up through the trays. And it appears the sprays, the water is sprayed in um, from the condensate. It removes all the oxygen, condenses the steam. All that's left is oxygen, CO2 mix, non-condensables. There's a little orifice in the vent line. Uh, you have just a light amount of steam coming out and a light venting going on to remove the oxygen. So basically our condensate comes in. It's sprayed, uh, it gets heated, it drops down here and these are trays. You want to get maximum contact of water with the steam to strip all the oxygen and non-condensable gases off. So there's a lot of surface area here as it drops down. From here it goes down to the storage tank, uh, steam blanket on it, and this feeds your boiler feed pump. This style of generator is a combined combination generator storage tank. You have your steam inlet comes in. Your condensate comes in, you have your spray nozzles. Sprays down to a tray. It's caught, carried down here to the steam scrubber. Steam comes down, mixes with the condensate. Uh, this does the final generation part here and heats the feed water up. The steam in here uh, gets sprayed. Then it have a vent that removes any non-condensable gases. <clears throat> this is a smaller unit on small boilers. Um, these are more large power plant type boilers that have the generator and the generator storage tank with it. Okay, this is the generator operation part. Um, shut down. You want to remove the feed water first, and then close the steam, then open the vents. You don't want dry steam conditions in the generator, so you need to bring the feed water down and bring the steam down together. You don't want to just shut the steam off, hit this thing with water. Uh, it do a lot of damage to it. So it's kind of a move. If you trip the plant, just keep in mind your steam's going to be dropping. You need to pull the feed water off on, on it. Start up. You want water first and then steam. You want to slowly heat them up. You do not want to fill them full of steam and then hit them with water. Uh, it could be a catastrophic damage to the deaerator. Um, deaerator problems. You have tray upsets, plant trips, trays flood from volumetric expansion. It's caused from a drop in the steam pressure. Cold condensate collapses steam in the upper section, creates high pressure differential, and the trays are dislodged. You have a lot of energy in this water, especially if it's running 70 PSI. You drop the pressure real quick, this is gonna start expanding. And then you spray cold water in here, this collapses. Now you have all this energy shooting up. I've read where you have like 30,000 pounds per square inch force. So basically you'll knock the trays out of alignment, do quite a bit of damage to your generator. Um, high O2. You have high O2 in a generator. It's probably not venting correctly. Uh, you need to check the steam inlet. Uh, usually they have an orifice on your line coming out of the generator. There's also valves, like this has startup valves. Um, you may have to vent more. But usually it, the orifice is big enough so you have just a slight plume of steam coming out. You don't want it blown out. And you don't, you don't want no steam at all. Cracking is a major problem with generators. It's probably the number one thing people need, really need to be aware of. Um, it can be oxygen-induced corrosion cracking uh, from cyclic stress. It can also be caustic stress corrosion. Uh, the big thing the stress is in this from the temperature, steam, and water hitting it, it can create quite a bit of damage cracking over time. A lot of the cracking is below water level in the storage tanks. Another thing you need to keep an eye out. Um, said cycling stress is the main factor. Rumble and shake. Can be the momentary loss of positive steam pressure. 
maybe insufficient steam supply uh, can cause a lot of damage to the aerator. Uh, springs on the spray valves too tight can be a problem. Uh, trays loose, end doors off. We talk about the spray section here. They got doors. Uh, thermal cycles, 100 degree temperature variation on the aerator. You can take a million cycles before you start having cracking. 200 degree temperature variation, 100,000 cycles before you start getting cracking. Four to 500 degrees temperature variation, you can have 10,000 cycles before you start getting cracking. Um, generator storage tank cracks, they're a major source of failure. There's been a lot of failure of equipment from cracks that got missed. The spray valve, you have your valve here, a spring, you can tighten down this nut, controls the amount of pressure. This just allows this valve, requires so much pressure for it to spray correctly. So you want good spray, you just don't want the water dribbling in here. You want kind of spray to knock down the steam and get good duration. Yearly, you need to check for cracks. Check spray nozzles for plugged, damaged, or loose nuts or parts on them, broken parts. Check the trays for alignment, make sure they haven't gotten knocked out of alignment. And you want to check for corrosion. Um, big thing is cracking down the storage tanks. And the deaerator where water is coming in and hitting them. The problem with the cracks, you don't know you have a problem until they, something ruptures and comes apart. So deaerators are really an item that is not thought much about. Especially when you're running a plant trip, this is about the last thing you're going to think about the deaerator. But hitting this with cold water and no steam flow, it can create quite a bit of problems.